as soon as I saw Bill Burr in this episode, I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Yes, we get more quality Mandalorian. I'm so excited. And then the episode started. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Justin Proper and today I'm coming at you with another review of The Mandalorian Chapter 6, The Prisoner. This episode was directed by Rick Famuya, Rick, Rick F. I don't know how to pronounce his last name at all. He directed episode 2 which is another one that I personally enjoyed. So I was kind of having high hopes for this. So first and foremost I just want to address that they do not pick up immediately where the last episode left off. Like you know that whole twisted at the end where they had uh, some bounty hunter go up to the dead chick's body and kneel down over it and people thought it was Boba Fett or something well looks like we're gonna get answers to that another day because this episode has nothing to do with this one or pretty much any of the other episodes in fact you could say this is once again a standalone episode which in of itself isn't bad but let's let's just get into what actually happens first off we see Mando docking his ship onto this space station which is run by a guy named Ran I'm not kidding about that. Much like these last few episodes, the redundancy is once again in full effect. Quick side note, Ran is actually portrayed by Clancy Brown, better known as Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob SquarePants. Kind of a fun fact there. And of course, Bill Burr is finally in this episode, which I've mentioned probably like three times already, but we'll get to his character in a second. Mando and Ran are old friends. I guess they used to do a lot of missions together. And the Mandalorian agrees to do another job. Again. Once more, redundancy in full effect. Did I mention redundancy? The Mandalorian agrees to do this mission basically out of refuge and also to get more money. And Ran introduces Mando to the crew, which consists of Mayfeld, who is played by Bill Burr. He's an ex-Imperial sharpshooter, which they don't pull back on the punches when making fun of the stormtroopers in their aim, which I found to be quite hilarious. Mando makes a funny clip of how Imperial sharpshooters are terrible at aiming, and Bill Burr says, I wasn't a stormtrooper, wise ass! Ugh, that was a terrible Bill Burr impression. But I have to admit, it did take me out of the show a little bit, but we'll get to that later. The rest of the crew consists of a droid named Zero. I guess he was named after Mike. A Deveronian named Berg. For those of you who don't recognize the name, you will recognize the face. He was that devil creature guy from A New Hope in the Cantina. Yes, you heard that correctly. The devil guy has... Come back! He has returned! Something that we, the fans, have been wanting for all these years was to see the Devil Guy again. And of course a Twi'lek woman whose name I completely forget. So I'm gonna call her Twi'lek Lady. And apparently the Twi'lek Lady and Mando had a thing back in the day. So there's a bit of history there and maybe some resentment. And if I'm perfectly honest, the way the character kinda acted was a bit cringeworthy. Not the acting itself, but just the character, just how she was being seductive and whatever, it, yeah, just no. And basically the mission is to rescue Twi'lek Lady's brother, Chin, or Quinn, or whatever, it's literally spelled Q-I-N. I don't really know what that is supposed to say, I, they say it a couple times, but I, again, just no. I'm gonna call him Quinn because to hell with it. Quinn is a prisoner of the New Republic. They basically have him in this space jail, and the mission is to break him out of the space jail because... reasons. Reasons. And they have to use the Mandalorian ship, and Bill Burr basically compares it to a slot machine at Canto Bite. I am so not in the mood right now. No more references of the movie that shall not be named. Or that god-awful, pointless sequence that did nothing but waste our time, our valuable precious time that we will never get back. Thank you, John Favreau, for that lovely reminder. But in fairness, it is kind of a jab at the ship, basically calling it the ship a piece of crap. So in all fairness, it's kind of a funny, you know, spot on jab there. So I'll give it a pass. Much like the cast and crew of Rise of Skywalker, he's one of us. <laughs> 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 so anyways, they leave on the Mandalorian ship, and there's a bunch of banter that happens around. And then at some point, the crew's mocking Mando for never taking off his helmet. Bilber even asks if Mando is secretly a Gungan. <laughs> he says, is that why you so don't show your face? Which is kind of another jab at one of the weaker films in the episodic franchise, which I actually found quite amusing. And then they mock Mando for not ever taking off his helmet, which leads to a bit of a scuffle with him and Berg, and they start 
fighting a little bit, and then they accidentally press the button that reveals a secret door, and of course, who's hiding there? None other than Baby Yoda, which they take quite an interest in. Bill Burr even picks him up and pretends to drop him. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. And anyway, after a rough landing, they break into the space prison, and they have to go into the control room in order to find the cell block where Quinn is being held. And there's some more bantering, and then they see an MSE6, which is that little remote control car thing from A New Hope. And Berg, who's not a complete idiot, decides to shoot him, which alerts the security droids, and they take them out pretty easily. But still, that's a really, really stupid idea, Berg. In fact, now that I think about it, Berg is probably the dumbest out of all of them. So they managed to find him off and get into the control room, but there's a New Republic soldier who's in there kind of looking over and watching the facility. And fun fact, I actually just found this out. He's actually played by Matt Lanter, who is the voice of Anakin Skywalker in The Clone Wars. Another fun fact there. Now that I think about it, there's a lot of great cameos in this. You got Mr. Krabs, Anakin Skywalker, and Bill Burr in one episode of The Mandalorian. I mean, who would have thought? That's actually pretty cool and it's actually the guy's first live action performance and he did a great job but the soldier's carrying a tracking beacon which he threatens to activate if they decide to come any closer and they get into a little bit of a scuffle mando doesn't want to kill the guy but the others do and they all point guns at each other and while they're arguing twilight lady just shoots them but not before the guy activates the tracker beam and they're all screwed so they have like 20 some minutes to get quinn and get the hell out of dodge otherwise they're all all going to jail. So they find out Quinn's cell block number and they go to it, they free him, and then they throw Mando into the cell block and lock him in there because they're assholes. Meanwhile, on the ship, Zero receives some sort of transmission from Apollo Creed and discovers what exactly the significance is of Mando and Baby Yoda. Then with only 10 minutes remaining, Mando looks like he's gonna be screwed. But luckily, Mando is able to escape. He gets a grapple hook and just swings it out at this uh, security droid that's just walking down the halls doing his job and then just grabs him by the throat just takes him rips off his arm and then shoots him and i'm not gonna lie that sequence was pretty badass meanwhile zero alerts them of his presence but not before he's able to trap them in this facility so all they have to do is just go around hunt him down try to find him and they kind of get split up and mando takes them out one by one seeking his revenge. I will say his encounter with Berg was kind of lame. It's like he they shut the door on him, but he, there's, again, there's no blood or anything. So it's just like, what the, what was that? It just knocked him out or something? The Twilight Lady, that, that, was, that was okay, I guess. But that's all made up for when Mando finally gets to Bill Burr. And he's in a hallway where the lights just keep flickering. It's like that horror kind of vibe where every time the lights flicker on in the background, Mando gets closer and closer and closer to Bill Burr until he turns around, he's like, what? And he realizes he's behind him and he just screams, No! It, it kind of made me laugh. And it's kind of implied that he killed all three of them, but unfortunately that's not the case. He just kind of basically just throws them in a cell and now they're in prison, which is not nearly as cool as if they killed them off. But it does leave the door open for them to return in future episodes, which... I like. Meanwhile, Zero finds Baby Yoda and he tries to like have this little like hide and seek game where he tries to shoot Baby Yoda and it gets to a point where Baby Yoda is sitting there and the droid is pointing the gun at him and Baby Yoda looks like he's about to use the force and he's reaching out, he's reaching out with his tiny little hand. And then Mando comes up from behind and shoots the droid. And Mando escapes with the Twi'lek guy and they go back to the base. And he talks to Ran who knows about all of the stuff that happened with uh, the guild and all that crap and then Mando leaves and Rain and Quinn think that the tracker bean is actually on the on the ship and they're like ha ah, we're gonna get him but turns out that's not what happens he actually planted the tracker beam on Quinn and then just left so then there's these x-wings that come in and these new republic soldiers go and I guess arrest them and he screws them over he had smarts them and it's just a great ending and it does kind of prove how brilliant the Mandalorian can be at times but that's pretty much the end of the episode so my final thoughts on this first off it was kind of a filler episode much like the previous two episodes were however it was a very entertaining filler episode it was actually a bit longer it might have been the longest episode out of all of them so far which is kind of nice and the humor was 
spot on. Partially because of the very highly talented and very funny Bill Burr, which I can't stop mentioning and praising because he was really good in this one. I loved every moment of him on screen. And I really enjoyed the banter of the crew overall. It just seemed like everyone was just having fun with this episode. And I kind of wish the crew was featured in more of them. Like, if that was the crew that was with him with on all the previous episodes, I think the moment where he gets double-crossed, you would have felt that more emotional betrayal that the character feels. And it would have had a much bigger impact on the show as a whole. It would have been a nice plot twist for the audience, but they didn't have room for them or the budget for Bill Burr in the previous episode, so... What are you gonna do? And again, the Lady Twilight character was a little cringy at times, but it didn't really ruin the episode for me. And I think the downside of having all these cameos, especially uh, with Bill Burr being in this episode, it kind of took me out of the show. Like, I'm seeing Bill Burr in a Star Wars show. Like, it matched, but at the same time, I'm just thinking, like, yeah, that's Bill Burr. This is, like, a kind of a Bill Burr comedy sketch in a way. But it didn't take away any of the enjoyment at all. I actually really liked it. But it did take me out of it uh, uh, just a little bit. And even though this episode was really, really good and possibly my favorite episode so far, I do fear that this show has probably reached its peak for me. I just don't see how the next two episodes are gonna top this one. Hey, but I'd be more than happy to be presently... <laughs> IMPROPER! <laughs> but I'd be more than happy to be pleasantly surprised and be proven wrong, so... We'll have to wait and see until next week. Actually, I think it comes out on Wednesday. Just to not avoid the whole Rise of Skywalker coming out. Oh my god, I'm seeing it in six days. Ugh. Why? But anyways, yeah, next Wednesday, I believe, we're gonna get the next episode, and then after that, it'll be a couple of weeks after Christmas, and then that will be the end of season one. And last but certainly not least, I just want to congratulate Rick F. for swaying me to give this series another shot, because I really was not happy about the last episode at all. But if I'm perfectly honest, I think the next couple episodes, first off, I don't think that the, some of the... the twist endings on some of the previous episodes, especially chapter 5, I don't think that's going to be resolved this season unless they subvert my expectations and actually answer some questions. Because even though this was an entertaining episode, I still don't know what the direction is. Like, are we still just going to go from mission to mission? Is is that, like, going to be the whole show? And speaking of the entirety of the show, Baby Yoda was used very sparingly in this episode. But unless you count the almost using the Force moment, he really didn't do anything that was, like, really terrible. So... Baby Yoda was fine. But once again, if this is just gonna be about going from mission to mission and protecting Baby Yoda, it's gonna get stale. But those are just my thoughts, and let me know yours in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And a huge shout out to my proper compadre. What an ass, what a bitch, what a cuck. And if you wanna become a proper compadre, check out the Patreon link in the description down below. Thank you all so much, and as always, live long and proper, and have a great day.